Hello class, this is section 6.2 and in this video we are going to discuss difference approximations for derivatives. You have probably figured out by now that differential equations can be really difficult to solve. However, for a lot of practical applications, it is enough just to find a good enough approximation for the solution of a partial differential equation. Chapter 6, we will deal with ways to come up with these approximate solutions. The first thing we have to do is to find a way to come up with nice approximations for the derivative. According to Taylor's theorem, which you learned in Calculus 2, if a function f has an nth derivative, then we can write down its Taylor series at the point x0, like so. So if f is taken in the point x0 plus some difference delta x, then you have this expression of, of the function in terms of an n degree polynomial in delta x. So fx0 plus delta x over 1 f prime x plus delta x squared over 2 f double prime x and so on. And we have this remainder rn, where the remainder rn is equal to delta x raised to the n plus first power over the n plus first factorial times the n plus first derivative, taken at some point zeta n plus 1, which lies between x0 and x0 plus delta x. You've learned in calculus 2 how to use the Taylor series to find polynomial approximations of your function. And it turns out that we can also use them to find interesting approximations for the derivative. Let us first take the Taylor series at n equals 1. So let's look at the Taylor series for, f, for n equals 1. And notice that we have an f prime term over here. And we can quite easily solve for it to get f prime x naught equals fx naught plus delta x minus fx naught over delta x minus r1 over delta x. Or well, let's just um, rewrite this r1 over delta x as delta x over 2 times f double prime zeta of 2. In other words, for delta x small, we have the f prime x naught is approximately equal to fx naught plus delta x minus fx naught over delta x with an error of minus delta x over 2, f double prime of zeta 2. And this is known as the forward difference approximation. And the reason it's called by that name is that we obtain this um, approximation by comparing fx at x0 and at x0 plus delta x, which is forward of that point. It makes sense then that if we looked instead at the x0 minus delta x, we can get another difference approximation. So if we replace the delta x with the minus delta x, so our graph looks like this, we're comparing x0 with x0 minus delta x instead, and we redo the entire thing. We start with Taylor series with fx0 plus uh, minus delta x, we get in the end f prime of x0 is approximately equal to fx0 minus delta x minus fx0 minus delta over minus delta x of error minus delta x over 2 f double prime, zeta 2. Note, however, that zeta 2 and zeta tilde 2 are not the same. Zeta 2 lies between x0 and x0 plus delta x, and zeta 2 lies between x0 and x0 minus delta x. And this second approximation is known as the backward difference approximation. You may notice that, oh, um, sorry, I had this wrong. This is a positive, not a negative. You may notice that the errors of the forward difference approximation and the backward difference approximation have different sign. Um, if they are wrong in different directions, it makes sense that by averaging these two approximations, we should get an even better approximation because the two errors would cancel each other out. And that's indeed something that we'll do rather frequently. So we can take the average of the forward and backward difference approximation, and we get the average of the left-hand side if it's f prime x0 and f from x0 over 2. That's a bit silly, but that's, there you have it. 
And then we add these two and we divide by half to obtain this term, fx0 plus delta x minus fx0 minus delta x over delta x. Notice that the fx0 term of the forward and backward difference approximations end up cancelling because of the minus sign in, in the denominator. So this is a delta x, uh, fx0 over delta x, and this is a fx0 over minus delta x, so they cancel each other out. And we're left with these two terms. And the error also gets averaged out, like so. And usually this error is going to be smaller than the error of both the forward and backward difference approximations. And this, of course, some f prime x0 plus f prime x0 over 2 is just equal to f prime x0. And this is known as the central difference approximation. And usually we will prefer to use the central difference approximation because the error tends to be smaller. But there are times in certain applications where people prefer using the forward and backward difference approximation.